Good morning, YouTube. Recently, April and I were in California driving around in a Ferrari California. You all watched that video, seemed to like it, so thank you so much for that. But also, I sat in on a few podcasts. One of them was Doug DeMiro's Live on the Doug DeMiro channel, mm -hmm. which actually he's coming on as a guest here soon, so something to look forward to. Right. Uh, but also, I did the Smoking Tire podcast and talked about something that is very near and dear to me, <laughs> Cadillac Escalades. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. All right, what, do you, what last one on the list? Okay, well, probably gonna get controversial here, but it's just, I love them so much. GMT 800, Escalades, <laughs> H2s, <laughs> just every- Why? When I heard this audio, cause you were like playing it the other night, mm -hmm. and, I, and my brain, cause I didn't recognize that it was your voice for some reason, and my brain was like, there's another person on earth that thinks the same way you do about Escalades. Who is this crazy person? Well, of all the things that we talked about in an hour and a half, Matt Farah chose to take my Escalade take right. and post that <laughs> because obviously it's so well rehearsed and yeah. so passionate. Poor April has to sit through hours and hours and hours of me talking about how amazing my 2005 Cadillac Escalade is that I bought for $8,500. It is cool. But uh, it is yeah. an icon. Everybody wanted the Escalade, the second generation, in the mid-2000s. Right. And it was all over MTV Crips. <laughs> My dad had one as a professional businessman, but, I mean, but everybody wanted them. And every single episode of MTV Cribs right. seemed to have one. And recently I actually found a video <laughs> of the best of when it came to MTV Cribs cars. Oh my gosh. It was like the ultimate key to success. Like, you know you've made it when you have a Cadillac Escalade especially if it had huge chrome rims on it. Right, so I thought it'd be fun to look through this right? you know, window into the past 20 years ago. And you can see how these people in the entertainment industry uh, wasted their money on cars that had depreciated so, so much. Right. So it starts with Redman and he's showing off his custom Isn't it cat. Redman? Sorry, okay. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly. Yes, sir, Mr. Redman. Mr. Redman. He's showing off, look at his custom escort here. <laughs> he's got spinners on it. He's got LEDs. Spinner. Can you put he's spinners got the on yours? Bentley grill. <laughs> he has the interior all done up. So this would have been about $50,000 new and then easily spent another $30,000 on That's it. That's so good. Nowadays, the Escalade is getting more collectible. Right. Like a lower mileage example, 37,000 miles of the short wheelbase like this. This right. is a 2002 with this, uh, the older steering wheel, Do actually. You see it's a winner only thing. Excited, but his voice is. This would be about a $20,000 car, one recently sold for. Uh, with 37,000 miles. Like, customized doesn't really add anything, but 2002 is one year only, so you get the older climate control set up and all of that. Um, <laughs> Do they pay you? Does Cadillac pay you to pump up their Escalade? No, I don't like the new Escalade, so that, <laughs> okay. that wouldn't work. Okay. But he also had an SC430, which mm -hmm. is interesting, yeah. kind of the grandpa's convertible, yeah. but they've actually become more collectible. Really? I don't know what these were new, I guess, Jake and Post, I would guess around $50,000 okay. what they cost new. Uh, actually, a low mileage one can bring 30s. It's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but of course, he put rims on yeah. that as well. Huge rims. Yes. So, you know, with MTV though, you just, you never know what's real and what's not real. Right. I worked for MTV mm -hmm. for a while. Yes. And we have to stage some stuff. I did right. Guy Code and Girl Code, if you've ever seen it, and MTV Spring. That was Spring. the show that she was on. I yes. was on that, and mm -hmm. MTV Spring Break with Andrew Schultz. We mm -hmm. hosted that in Cancun. but they have to kind of like make things exciting and, and enhance things. And I feel like I remember someone telling me about MTV Cribs, one of the producers, where they had to like almost bring cars for some of these people to make the episode look more exciting. Right, there is one very famous moment that was faked in MTV Cribs that was pretty iconic, but then it was sleuthed out that he was fraudulently claiming these cars were his. We'll get to that in a little bit. And if you're wanting to see for yourself how much these MTV era cars have depreciated, you could check it out yourself on Auto Tempest. And thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring this video and good morning, YouTube. I've looked up Maybach 57s and you can see the range $34,997 with 83,000 miles for a Maybach 57. Or the expensive one is $59,995 with 60,000 miles. So a big swing there, but still way off its MS. 
MSRP. And AutoTempest makes this possible because it combines all the major listing sites into one search so you can get any color of Maybach you want, even though there's not many for sale, you can see most of them were black and silver, or you can search by mileage or certain options, whatever you want, just like all the major sites except it combines it all into one search. So use AutoTempest to search for cars like I do every day. And obviously tell your friends that they're shopping for a used car, their first stop should be Auto Tempest. I didn't see any XMTV Cribs cars on there though, <laughs> unfortunately, but back to those. I don't even know who this guy is. Benji Madden. Who is Benji Madden? It's not Blink-182, but it's like... So he has a 64 Impala. That's cool. Which is a very California I thing. I like that. They've held their values or increased in value. And I could see someone just like owning that and having that. It's not some crazy expensive right. ride. An old Harley, a Chevelle. Or Chevelle. That's like yes. the standard. Yeah, it looks like he has an old conversion van. But then this is the funny one. Like an Infiniti Q45. Yeah. This V8 weird looking Infiniti, which he said that, uh, you know, when someone's made it in my town, they buy the Infiniti Q, which, uh, yeah, now a used car, if one still exists, because part support with Infiniti is just so terrible. Really? They're difficult to keep running. Gosh. Uh, they're darn near worthless. So they, they wasted 50 grand. But the Gallardo. This is another one that he had, the Gallardo with yellow wheels. Right. I'm sure this one's an E-gear, but it's early Gallardo. Like, do you really think he owned that one? I think so. They're expensive, and they're expensive to maintain, and they're not practical. And I, I don't, he has a lot of old school cars, mm -hmm. like those 60s, 70s cars. But this is definitely something that, uh, you know, an entertainer would have bought in the early mid-2000s. Okay. The Gallardos were everywhere. They weren't ridiculously expensive, so, right. you know, for under 200 grand, you could get one of these. And they've depreciated down to... You can get one of these like this, like 30,000 miles for 80, 90 grand. Really? So, okay. Yeah. Not the best investment, but there's some way worse ones in these clips. Okay, Shaq. So here's Shaq. Very <laughs> young looking Shaq. So young. And oh he my had gosh. some amazing cars. I know they had multiple appearances, but of course, he had an Escalade. Did you see the emblem on the front? Yep, he the put the Superman. Superman logo. Oh, that's amazing. He has it on Air Ride. Once again, this is a 2002, first year of the GMT 800 yeah. Escalade with the older style. Hmm. Um, interior, hmm. but he has it on and hydraulics. Even on the headrests, he has his Shack logo there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and in the back too. Yep. That is so cool. That right. is so cool. But once again, fifty grand for the Escalade and probably another fifty grand in customization. Right. Uh, the Aviator, uh, cool because of the engine they had in it. Same yeah. with the Mustang Mach One, the all aluminum uh, thirty-two valve V eight. But they're they're not worth anything nowadays. There's. I, I don't know when's the last time I've seen an old aviator, first generation, still on the road. But uh, yeah, he mounted the stereo up high in the air because he's so tall he could oh, reach forward. Right. It's easier to turn so the knobs there. So then he even just did a big TV. Fit in there because he's huge. He's mm -hmm. like massive, massive, massive. But this one's fun. Bentley Azur. Okay. So he would have spent probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars on that lot. new uh, nowadays a bentley azure you're lucky to get 50 for it the diablo se30 though this thing the diablo roadster mm -hmm. that is becoming a collectible car even though he did customize it with the ostrich and such uh, the interior probably a four hundred thousand dollar car i don't know if the ostrich really ta i get customization can devalue anything but ostrich is like the most high-end interior i feel like you could put in a car mm -hmm. But the Escalade wasn't enough. He had to have an H2 as no. well, which is the same platform <laughs> no. as the, the Escalade. H2, yeah. Which is a car he would fit in. See, look how big his feet are. Mm -hmm. And it's still, those rims are still bigger than him. Because you got a picture with Shaq one time with his hand, right? You told this story about the next <laughs> getting mad because so like, he went I, to... <laughs> I shot a movie with him, Grown Ups 2, as the dance teacher. And Shaq was, I think he was a police officer right. in the movie. And we had our like rap party in New York somewhere. And he had probably the funniest reaction to you dancing when they panned through all their faces. <laughs> yeah. And they're like... <laughs> Like his was his was especially good of, of you, right. the dance teacher. Well, and I was actually still dancing. I just wasn't on camera because I mm -hmm. changed all the cameras. So probably for like a half hour, 45 minutes, I'm just dancing on my own. They didn't have like a body double or anything. I was so tired. But they're like, we need real reactions from the guys. But like you were saying, I got in trouble for a picture that I took with him because Shaq's hand is so big. Okay, it is so big. He had his arm around me. But it went from like my like maybe thigh here to my back. It's just so big. So he's trying to put your hand on your back, but it's just, it it's over just so big. And laps into other places. Yeah, and so the guy that I was seeing at the time is thinking, 
why did you let Shaq grab your butt? And I mean, like, there's zero. There's nothing going on Shaq between me and Shaq. Shaq just grabbed the entire body because that's all he can do. Like, yeah. But I got, in a lot, I got in a lot of trouble for that picture, and I, I don't understand why. But he's, he's massive, and he can fit in the Cadillac Escalade, which you right. know, reiterates how amazing they are. Well, I'm not sure if it was him, but somebody, maybe his NBA player, had a Gallardo lengthen so they could fit in it. <laughs> like, they added a... a two feet to it and it does look pretty ridiculous yeah. popped up for sale very cheap because it, it looks so dumb now robin big a denali so mm. same chassis as the escalade but they customized the denali blacked it all out i think that looks, looks pretty good, good. Looks uh good. denali's haven't come up as quite as much as escalates though they're still you know cheap used cars are you just saying that because you love your bias no i would love a denali i had a denali uh, i just prefer the escalade i think they're fantastic but um yeah not quite the uh you know, mythical status right. of the Escalade. But this one, see, all the, cause, like they put the TVs in the uh, top. You can open up and like have a tailgate party with a yes. TV in the rear hatch. I like that. Oh, so of course, good. the subwoofers. He's got his skateboards yeah. everywhere. Which was huge, your sound system. Mm -hmm. Back when was this, like the early 2000s? Yes. That was a huge thing. Like, what do you have? Absolutely. What did you add? Bentley Continental GT. That would have been $200,000 new. Now, thirty to $45,000, depending on the miles. So that's gorgeous. big depreciation there. It looks gorgeous and white. Yes. It's beautiful. Custom rims, of course. What HREs. Was he, what was he doing back then to, to afford all these cars? Well, he had his his clothing brand, I believe, and then of course the show. Now right. that's all that plays on MTV now is is his ridiculousness right. over and over and I over don't know again. If he the had that show back then. So he had the, the show. Clothing brand. This, okay. this Robin Big show was was on back then. Right. But yeah, his his uh, clothing line, the skateboard mm -hmm. stuff, was making him tons and tons of money. Uh, Chrysler 300C is something that's sort of a forgotten car. Mm -hmm. But they were all over MTV Cribs. Everybody was buying these and customizing them. And once again, this is a $50,000 car that this is back when Chrysler and Mercedes were part of the same company. So it benefited from like Mercedes E-Class Engineering and Technology, right. a good riding, driving car, but they're all used junk in the junkyard. Busta Rhymes is another one starting with his Hummer H2, which look at that yellowed out interior custom. If there was one person that could sport an H2, it is him. That is like the pinnacle, like I could see him driving that and it fits him and it's perfect. Anyone else? Right. Mm, not so much. Well, the yeah. interior was plastic and heinous on those anyway. Yeah. Uh, so why not paint it, uh, sand it all and paint it the yellow color. I think it looks pretty good personally. But the H2s are collectible for sure. So new, once again, around 50, 60 grand. Mm -hmm. uh, a one with no miles can bring in the 30s. Right. But so. this was huge when you saw one of these, like mm -hmm. on MTV Cribs. You're like, okay, they're a movie star, they're a rock star. Right. Now, I really like this one because mm -hmm. they never made a crew cab Ford Lightning pickup truck. Mm -hmm. They were all regular cabs. Now, they made the Harley Davidson edition, right. which had the Lightning engine, the supercharger, but it looks all stupid as a Harley Davidson edition. So Buster Rhymes painted it red, like the Fast and Furious, the, like a Lightning color. Right. Uh, his own custom wheels, and it's sort of a what if, and I think it's really well done. And the Mercy Lago, a Verde Ithaca Mercy Busta had, which he would have spent, oh, not quite 300 grand on this new, and they're worth a lot now because what? this one is a gated manual. Really? Okay. He was a very savvy buyer because yeah. most people were doing the flappy paddle lead right. gear stuff. This one's a gated manual car, which it's not an LP car, which makes it even rarer in the later. Uh, versions of the Mercy, but still probably $400,000 car now. What? Yeah, so it's appreciated past its MSRP at this wow. point. Wow. I like, you know, there's like custom touches or whatever, but I like his custom touches with the green piping and the seats mm -hmm. and the wheels with the green highlight on there. He's, yeah. he's got good taste. It's not like over the top crazy. Mm -hmm. G Wagons were just entering the scene too, so he had a G Wagon. Yeah. With um, flip mode on the front. Right. That's amazing. So Buster Rhymes is doing pretty good. I like his cars. Mm -hmm. His car selection, that was solid. And an Escalade in the background. They didn't feature it with Buster Rhymes. But yeah, pretty solid car collection. Because they'd have to <laughs> skip around, obviously, for time. I didn't even see that. Now, we are seeing Camelo Anthony. Is he an athlete? I don't know. I don't know who he is, but he has great taste. Oh my gosh, that high conversion top conversion van <laughs> like mine, rolling in wheels. That's yeah, so good. Yeah, rims, custom that out interior. 
so I good. Say, I just I just love this era, and that's sort of what my focus is when it yeah. comes to my cars. But uh, I'd rather have this than a Sprinter. Like Sprinters are cool, mm -hmm. and I get it. But like this is just they're so roomy and comfortable. Yep. Uh, Chevelle. Okay. With the custom paint job, yeah. I assume he's an athlete because of the was that the logo the for some, or something, something maybe? like that. But it's yeah. Cal induction, all customized, yeah. Chevelle. It's beautiful. Those have held their values or appreciated in the last 20 years a lot. It's definitely custom, which would hurt it, I think, considering oh, yeah. uh, the Suicide Door Lincolns have exploded <gasps> recently in value. So Beautiful. So very, very good taste. Uh, we're seeing these with Coyote Swap selling at Barrett-Jackson for you know quarter million dollars or more. But I do see a lot of them that aren't done nicely, mm -hmm. and it makes me so mad because there's just this beautiful, iconic 60s body yes. suicide doors, and just like pieced together, plasticky, like not done mm -hmm. over the top nice like each one should be. Right. So a Mybox here. I mm -hmm. believe this one's a 57. Okay. So it would have been a mid three hundred thousand dollar wow. car. And uh, if you're an athlete buying yourself a Mybox new, you lost a lot of money because yeah. now this would be a forty thousand dollar car. So you've lost two hundred fifty thousand dollars in depreciation. Forty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Same with the rest of his cars. See these uh, Challenger series, right. the earliest SRT Challengers, and one he chopped the roof off. The roof. Yes, to make it a convertible because they never made Challenger convertibles in this Good era. Good for him. Right. That's interesting. I like that he did that. But probably new $150,000 worth of Challengers sitting right there in his driveway. And uh, yeah, now not. It looks good as a convertible. $15,000, yeah. That windshield is like super mm -hmm. swept back and it's just chopped and low. And I, I, I dig it. I, I like would it. say it's well done, but is there no roof under there? Is that why they have this fake cover going right. around it where it's just a permanent convertible? Probably. Because they probably, yeah, they no, probably they didn't, didn't do the engineering. That. But who knows? Um, this one, CC <laughs> Sabithia? What is Has an Escalade golf cart, which is awesome. Oh, hold on, Once again, Escalade. Some drool. Yeah, Does I know. Want I want that. that golf cart so bad. <laughs> Yes. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But behind him, then there's the heavy hitters, the Rolls Royce Phantom. That would have been a $400,000 car new that's depreciated to a nice one's still like $80,000. Wow. So that's a lot of depreciation. What would you rather have, the Escalade golf cart or the Rolls Royce? Well, the Phantom for sure. <laughs> Olds Cutlass. That's like the quintessential mm -hmm. muscle car look that you have to have in your collection. Right, but very much of its era with those wheels and yeah. things. And nowadays, customs are much more tastefully done, I would say, to where they, I think they would age better. change the car so mm -hmm. drastically. Yeah. It looks like a completely different car. Yeah. So not bad. The next one to be featured is Fat Joe inside mm -hmm. of, I think this is unique or, you know, like the people who did Pimp My Ride. Right. Gotta have a G-Wagon. Yes. The G-Wagon is a must with rims, <laughs> but he also had... A Maybach. Of course. Oh my god. Showing off the Maybach, once again, a massive depreciated car. I have a 62 with a partition that I bought for $40,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is not a long wheelbase, no. once again, but still very cool. And it probably doesn't have Star Trek DVDs in it. No, like it does not. Okay. And another Bentley Continental <laughs> GT because this Ooh. was the big car of the mid 2000s. That but red interior is sexy. Massive, massive, massive depreciation. Mm -hmm. No doubt there's a few of these people that are completely broke. <laughs> but this is the infamous one we were talking about where they faked it and it's oh. 50 cent. Oh, not 50 cent, seriously. Which 50 cent. <laughs> Poor guy. Was broke at one point. Very, very broke. And then he got yeah. into vitamin water. He's, he could buy all these cars now easily. But oh in the driveway oh was an F40, yeah. an F50, yeah. and an Enzo. <laughs> and they claimed they were his. And people were able to debunk it somehow by looking it up and see it was owned by someone else. And some oh of these gosh. were rentals. But he faked all of this in his driveway. The only way you'll see those cars lined up is if we go to like the RM auctions or those mm -hmm. huge high-end auctions where they have them lined up. Anywhere else, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it was just so stupid and so easily debunked. But at the time, we thought he was the coolest guy <laughs> ever, like the best taste in cars ever. Now, how did they um, find out? Like, how did that leak out? Do you know? Oh, I don't, I don't, like, I don't remember the details exactly. Mm -hmm. But the five nine nines there as well. Of those three yeah. cars, we got ten million dollars worth of Ferrari right. today that you could have bought for probably under two million twenty years ago. But the five nine nine was something uh, that was very expensive mm -hmm. in that era in two thousand. Six, seven, eight, nine. Right. That was selling for over its MSRP, five hundred thousand dollars in Isn't some cases. Manual? That uh, oh no, they only made yeah. twenty of those. Uh, that now you can buy for mid hundreds. So they've depreciated they only made quite a bit. Twenty manual five nine nines from the factory. Yeah, 
What? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yes, yeah, so a few muscle cars, but then he does this goofy product placement of a Pontiac G6 GXP, which he says he worked with Pontiac to spec this out himself. So he turned it into a commercial with Pontiac paying him, and they're about to go bankrupt, obviously, by the end of the decade, yeah. to say, this is my baby here, a Pontiac G6, you I've know? I've never seen a G6 in person, and I'm not mad about that. They do not look good. There's like a right. bird's beak that just kind of comes down, and it's a very weird mm -hmm. design, very tiny little grill. I don't get it. But obviously they had to pay people to say that they liked them. Right, and then they couldn't get rid of them, so then they had Oprah give away G6s to everyone in her audience. So it was these last desperate attempts to get people to see G6s, and it obviously didn't work. So that is the big one. There's more in here. There's Aaron Carter, of course. He has an Escalade and a yeah. G-Wagon because, of course, it's the EXT, the truck version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's Pete Wentz, yep. who has a newer Tahoe, so this is around 2007 at least. Which is very cool. Mm -hmm. I like a Tahoe. It's not, hey, look at me, look at how much money I'm making, I'm rich and flashy. It's like, that's a sweet car. And the Rincio Atlas, like mine, the one you didn't want to be seen in, so I sold it, uh, my Murcielago Roadster. It would just be weird to be like pulling up at my parents' house or going to get ice cream or just kind of like, it's just kind of like a crazy over the top. Car. Right. <laughs> you know, so. But it is cool. So <laughs> They're very cool. He did have some taste there. I like it. Of course, with custom wheels. Snoop Dogg sort of rounds out this video with yeah. all kinds of crazy customs on hydraulics, a big Pontiac convertible, all kinds of things, a Chrysler 300C. Uh -huh. All of them look like they're $250,000 plus builds yeah. that maybe with Snoop's name attached to it, they would be worth something, but otherwise, yeah. like completely dated and worthless now. He can do no wrong. Anything right. he built or customizes, I'm down with. I like it. Mm, I yes. think, though, the moral of the story today is which one of Tyler Hoover's cars should we put spinners on? Chrome spinners. I would do it in an instant. This is this is just my which era. Car? This was I was watching this on TV, mm -hmm. and it was so aspirational. I was like, man, I want all of these cars. And now, well, because they've depreciated so much, mm -hmm. I'm able to own a lot of them. <laughs> True, your and childhood so happy. dreams have come true. Yes. And we're getting spinners. <laughs> Another dream came true when I was in the theater watching Grown Ups 2. You know, I was like Shaq. But thank you so much for watching. Okay, MTV Cribs, let's check out the rides. I've assembled a magnificent selection for you. Each car has a special place in my heart. It's been with me at a very important moment, starting with my 1998 Aston Martin DB7. When I signed with the Lakers in 98, my homeboys Kobe and Shaq told me I needed to treat myself, so I bought this beautiful James Bond Aston Martin. Now, in 2001, when I got my Grammy for Best New Artist and my album went platinum, I got this 2002 911 Turbo. Oh, yeah. And now to celebrate my breakout acting role on Too Fast, Too Furious, I'm expecting an Academy Award for that, I've bought myself a 2003 Hummer H2. I just bought it, so no rims yet. I'll probably get some Lexanis or some GNLs, but right now, got the king daddy of Cribs cars. So MTV, I hope you enjoyed the tour of my crib, my house, my cars, my refrigerator, my bedroom. But now, it's time to say goodbye. Peace. Get out of here, go, get.